Hello, good evening, or well, good afternoon, wherever your time zone is, and welcome to Stash Chats. I am Yvette, co-founder of the Stash Hub app, and I'm really excited to have another amazing guest from the sewing community joining us today to talk about their sewing journey and their stash. So today I'm talking to Tony, who was a finalist in the Great British Sewing Bee last year and I'm really excited to talk to Tony because he's got a little bit of a different approach to stashing and to sewing as well so I'm sure we can pick up loads of great tips from Tony today so as always please do get involved if you're watching live and um, comment in the chat so let us know that you're watching and if you've got any questions or comments for Tony as well do drop them in the chat Hello, Mel. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Right, should we get Tony on, get this conversation started? Hello, Tony. Thank you hey, so man, much for doing? joining us. Good. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm quite excited about it as well, so we're all good. Excellent. Oh, that is really exciting to hear. Um, so do you want to just kick us off with a little like brief intro into yourself? Okay. Uh, I'm Tony. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm a postman from Bude in North Cornwall. Uh, I'm a maker, uh, and you probably know me better from being one of the 12 sewers on Series 9 of the Great British Sewing Bee uh, last year. Uh, I am also a brother ambassador, uh, which is a relatively new thing, but that's great fun as well. Uh, I tend to make uh, a lot with vintage clothing and zero waste patterns and i'm sure we'll get into all that in a bit <laughs> exciting so how long have you been sewing for tony not that long in the scheme of things really uh i've only been sewing for about five years i started at the ripe old age of 50. um i'm 55 now if for those that can't do the maths um uh, i started sewing um i used to do a bit of knitting a bit of crocheting um as a long as a long answer and a short answer i'll try and do a medium answer um i used to travel a lot um with my previous work uh i used to do a lot of long haul travel um and on that long haul travel instead of drinking and watching films i'd take a, a crochet hook on with me and i'd crochet nothing particular nothing fancy just use bulky yarn and a big hook and have something at the end of the flight um and i stopped that work um it was in manufacturing operations and i was flying all over the place and i didn't want to do that anymore um, so when I stopped it at the age of 50, um, I took a gap year, which was fantastic. And uh, yeah, started to just mess about with my, my, my yarn crafts, a bit of knitting, a bit of crocheting. Um, wanted to leave the house with me, with my yarn. Um, was a bit embarrassed to do so, to be totally honest. Um, so I thought I need to make myself a fancy bag uh, to put my knitting in and to put my crocheting in. And um, I couldn't find one out there that suited my style. It was all, They were all a bit chintzy and the like. Um, so I... Uh, I dug out my wife's sewing machine, which we'd had for a number of years and never really used, and thought, I wonder if I can make a bag. And I made a bag with the sewing machine. And that is literally the start of my sewing journey. And I haven't stopped since. I pretty much sew every day. Amazing. So um, what's your like approach to sewing? Do you like using patterns or do you draft your own or is it a bit of a mix? Um, I, I do a bit of both, really. Um, probably more what's called self-drafting. I don't call it self-drafting. I kind of learning on the job, uh, to be honest. Um, most of my on the job learning was done when I was on the sewing bee. Prior to being on the sewing bee, I'd only really made men's clothes, um, shirts. I love a shirt, love a loud shirt, um, and some shorts and some cycling clothing and a few bits and pieces. Never really made anything other than that. Uh, but being on the sewing bee, I got to make lots and lots of other stuff that i in fact pretty much everything that i made on the sewing bee i'd never made before um so every every single challenge was was literally a challenge but also a great opportunity to learn something um so i learned lots and lots of skills and lots of techniques um, that i hadn't done before um obviously it was all going in and a lot of people did say that they could see on subsequent weeks it was very obvious that i was using a technique i'd literally just learned the week before um, so yeah, so my my approach to sewing hasn't really changed really. I'm just I try and do new things. I, you, I don't know what I can't make until I've made one. That's kind of the way that I think. Um, so I will try all sorts, um, and I'll try. I tend to, I tend to if I see something that I like online um, or maybe in a shop, I'll try and recreate it. Um, 
you know, I think we all do it as makers and service, don't we? We go in and oh, I really like that. And you start to turn it inside and out. And you think, well, that's just a standard seam there. And that's just, I can probably figure that out. So I tend to do that. That's my approach. I kind of see something we like, and then I make my version of it. Or um, the other approach is I tend to use a lot of uh, recycled clothing. Um, I tie up with my local vintage store and they supply me with their scrap at the moment, which is great. Not all of it, because that'd be way too much. But these big bales that vintage shops kind of bring in, um, they sort out the good stuff and they sell that. And then there's the bits and pieces that are left. Typically, they're oil stained or paint stained or ripped and uneconomical to repair, basically. So I kind of take some of that off them and try and repurpose that, either turning them into new garments or repairing them. Um, yeah, so my, my, my approach is kind of experimental. I think it's fair to say a bit of self-drafting, but I do tend to follow some patterns as well. But, uh, you know. With your like refashioning approach, that sort of kind of a project by project base, you'll, you'll see what you get and figure out what you can do with it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, this week, um, I was given some trench coats, um, again, by, this, by the same store. Um, just because they've got lots of trench coats in at the minute. So I, I had a couple of those uh, and I had a big man's uh, trench coat, large, well, my size trench coat, um, but it had lots of oil stains on it, on the, the arms and, and splattered around. So initially I saw it and thought, that's fantastic. There's a load of fabric there, Let's see what I can come up with. But once I'd seen what was actually usable, um, there wasn't a fat lot. But what I did manage to make was a skirt out of it. I made uh, like a, I suppose a combat skirt one could say a long skirt i utilized the the features on the back of the trench coat the nice um nice cut it had a inverted box piece on the back with a tab it was lovely and then i managed to cover up some of the oil stains with some pockets that i then reapplied on yeah so that's kind of my thing I, I, i'll get some fabric i'll see what's usable and try and put it together another way um yeah and i love it it's 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 just a way of keeping the skills up um, it's almost like the transformation challenge yeah. <laughs> on, on, on the show, um, but you've got, I've got a lot more time and I get to think about it and, um, and yeah, it's, it, it's just, I suppose it's my, I've got an engineer in mind. That was my old, my old world. And I think it's my engineer in mind that kicks in. It's like, I'm, I'm sure I can make that. And I've got this little bit of fabric in here and a bit of fabric there. Let's see how it goes together. Um, oh, and I need, now I need a waistband or oh, I'm going to pop a zip in there. Oh, there's a bit of a mark there. Let's put a pocket over that or a patch or, you know. So, yeah, so that's kind of my approach to sewing. Um, I do I do buy fabric, uh, but only on a project-by-project project basis. I need, I need to have a project before I will buy fabric. Um, as I say, I'm a postman, so <laughs> the, uh, I, I don't earn the most money in the world. So I, I'm very frugal, one could say, um, when it comes to, to purchasing fabric. I, I need to have something very clear in my mind. And if I don't have um, any fabric that I can use reclaimed fabric to do it, I'll, I'll go out and buy it. And typically the fabric that I buy is um, cotton drill. I love that. Cotton drill, twills, um, other stable fabrics. Um, when I'm making new clothes, let's call them, uh, they're typically based around work where 90s skate fashion that's kind of my jam really i kind of love that we've got like quite a lot of like structure to play with as well with those sort of heavier cottons haven't you yeah most definitely it is it's lovely um and they they, they, they go where you want them to go they'll press where you want them to be pressed um and yeah you can really play about with them get some nice good silhouettes yeah exciting well that uh, just chatting about your buying fabric habits leads us nicely onto your stash so do you want to tell us about your your stash yeah um my stash is i probably in comparison to most people's it's pretty much non-existent um i've got maybe about five pieces of fabric over two meters in my stash um and they've been there for quite a long time you know you have the special pieces that you think i don't want to use and, and, and they're those i've got two big pieces of ankara in there uh and a nice piece of like an okra I don't think you get many people that can talk all about every piece in their stash, can you? I can do it because there's only five pieces. And then some okra. And then um, also in, in my stash, actually, I, I'm lying. I do tend to use a lot of duvets. I use a lot of duvet sets, charity shops, duvet sets. Um, as my job as a postman in the small town that I live, I actually deliver around the town, the, the shops and all the flats around there. Uh, and we've 
as most little towns have got a good number of charity shops. And so they all know who I am and they all know that I love a duvet set. So they'll come out sometimes holding, Tony, do you want this one? Do you want this one? So I do Thanks. have a number. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's exactly like that. They know I like big printed uh, duvet sets too. Um, uh, most of the twiles that I do, I do in duvets. Um, uh, or sometimes I've made dresses for my wife um, just out of a duvet in itself because there's some great patterns out there. So, yeah, I've probably got two or three duvet sets on the go at any one time as well. The other part of moustache uh, is all my scraps, really. I tend to not dispose of my scraps. I'm, when I say a scrap on a, a, a rectangular-ish piece under half a metre, um, I'll keep all those, and I do keep them. Um, not because I'm a hoarder and I can't <laughs> and I can't lose them. It's just that I, I, I see a value in them but at some point. I tend to use a lot of those uh for pocket linings as a, as a as a good example or a face in where it's where there's a non-visible face in um so yeah i i tend to use all those if i have small bits um little triangular bits little curved bits that i can't use they go into a post office sack uh, which i save up and that i then take them to the local schools for them to use in their arts and crafts projects so i try and try and keep a level of circularity in all my mates if i'm either using secondhand clothing or a vintage clothing that's now called or when I do use virgin fabric, I try and use every last bit. And if it comes to the bit, but I can't, it's got to go in the bin. It doesn't go in the bin. It goes to arts and crafts. Oh, that's really cool. Have you have you seen any um, like projects that the kids have done at the school with fabric scraps? I I, ha I haven't as yet. No, I haven't as yet. Um, but I <laughs> just actually my my daughter come home today saying I need some blue. I I need a bag of black uh, blue scrap fabric for a project that we're doing. So I've kind of. I've just done a, recently done a denim project, so I've got quite a lot of tops of jeans and this, that, and the other, so they're going to cart that off tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get to see that soon. Nice. That would be really cool. Um, so I'm sure you're probably sick of talking about the sewing bee all the time, but I feel like I've got to ask you, like, what inspired you to apply to go on the bee? Um, what a great question. Is it, and it, but it is a question that I get, I, I get a lot, I won't lie. Um, I applied to prove everybody wrong. Now, bear with me on this. It's not, it's not as obvious as it sounds. Um, my work colleagues uh, at the posties uh, found out that I did a bit of sewing. When we were in lockdown, as everybody else did, we were making masks for, for I was making masks for my colleagues. Then they realized I could sew. So then the obvious is alterations that you do for your colleagues. Um, that's just what happens anyway when people realize that you make things. Um, so I was doing alterations. And then one day, one of my colleagues said, you should go on that busy bee thing. <laughs> you know, that, that's what you should go on. And I was, oh, no, and they just kept pestering me. They should go on that busy bee. Um, and I thought, well, no, I'm not sure. So I mentioned it to my wife um, and she said, well, you do realise that if you apply, you'll get on there. I went, oh, no, no. So to prove people wrong, I applied on the very last day <laughs> of the application process. Um, I did it to prove my wife wrong that I wouldn't get on. And I did it to for my work colleagues to say I applied and I didn't get on. You know, it was one of those. But of course as we know from history that I did get on um, and yeah that was it really and then so started the journey. Amazing I feel like normally it's like the other way around when people do stuff to prove people wrong isn't it when people are like yeah, nah, yeah that's it. So I suppose it's maybe a little bit thick-headed but it was kind of like <laughs> that was what it was because I was a relative you know a new maker but when we when I applied I'd only been sewing for about three years and my portfolio was like I said just shirts and, and, and clothing for myself uh, and some bags that I'd made for my bike. Um, I'm banging to my cycling, so I'd made some like cycling luggage and the likes. Um, but that all went in on my application. You know, you'd have to upload your portfolio, so they they knew what I could make. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was quite a, quite a surprise, one could say. Yeah, I was actually you, really shocked. Yeah, super shocked. But I went through the process, the application process, which is quite long winded, um, and. Then went on holiday. We hadn't been on a family holiday for a long time, so we went off to some uh, some Greek island somewhere. Um, and it was the, the penultimate day of the holiday, and my phone rang, and it was the producer saying, we'd like to invite you to be one of the 12 servers on the show. Well, okay. Okay, another pina colada, please. It was, uh, it was fantastic. It was great. Which was your favourite challenge of the three? So, like, the pattern challenge, the transformation, and the was made to measure? I learned the most on the pattern challenge because that was just obviously thrust into your hands and you have no idea what that is. Um, so I learned the most on that one. Um, it was also the most 
frustrating and, and, and the scariest one because you know you've you've got to do a good job at that. That holds. I don't know whether it does or not, but it feels like that holds quite a lot of weight within the process. I guess as well, it's quite easy to compare yourself to everyone else with that challenge because you yeah. see what the house is making. Yeah, it is because we're all making the same thing and we're all judged on exactly the same thing. We're all given the same brief, the same instructions. Um, so yeah, so that that's kind of the one where I learned the most. Uh, the made to measure, I, I love the made to measure um, because it allowed me to, to put my stamp on the brief, really. Um, I'm not sure you remember if, if if you look at my makes compared to, I mean, we all make completely different stuff. That was That's the beauty of, of the process and the beauty of the show, really. That everybody is so individual um and yeah i brought my individuality to that as well and admittedly some of those garments could be deemed as simple but it's it's me that's how i make i make i make strong profile you know, strong silhouette utilitarian stuff normally so that's kind of what i stamped onto the made to measure so that was that was great um transformation hated it finished yeah. <laughs> not enough time is it or just the i don't know the pressure it's you only get one go at it. That's yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? You, it? There's no magic of TV. It's it's exactly as you see it. Patrick stands there. He whips off a blue cloth. Says you've got to make something out of this. You've got 90 minutes go. There's no right. Let's stop for a bit. Every every bit of a thing. There's none of that. It's it's literally go, and yeah. something has to pop into your mind, uh, and you have to go with it because there's no there's no backtracking. There's no you can't change your mind. If you do, it, you've stuffed it. I mean, I I had. A, I think I probably had a couple of particularly bad goes at it, but the one in particular was um, on Utilitarian Week of all things, when we had to make a ladies' garment out of cleaning products, and I completely stuffed that up. Completely stuffed it. I, something went in. I thought, right, I'm gonna have a go at that, and I tried it, and I pinned it on my mannequin, and I pinned it. And I thought, I think that works, and then I took it off to sew it, and then I completely lost where I was. Uh, you know, my pins had fallen off, and yeah. But anyway, and there was a bit of a comedy aspect on that because I think I made a furry mini skirt and a hairy chest, so it didn't really. <laughs> it was awful. Sometimes with those transformations, the stuff that they give you, like it's never going to look good. Like you just have to just have to throw yeah. some spaghetti no, it... on to try and be creative. No, I totally agree. It is, yeah, but but everybody does make it look good somehow, don't they? I mean, it's it's just brilliant. I mean, th this year in particular, it's such creative people. Uh, I just yeah I was in awe of most of the other sewers to be honest on, on, on what they could produce just like have a he hectic time sewing and then you look up and look around and you're like wow look what everyone else has done yeah that's exactly it because you're the the the, the program itself um you're sewing your own little bubble you've got 12 11 other lovely people around you and you're all getting on with it but essentially when the challenges are happening you're just there and you're in this little this little it's just your table and you're just bashing what out whatever trying to bash out it's not until they stop the clock and shout that's it needles up that you look up and have a look around and see what everybody's done and it's wow you know fantastic i kind of imagine it's like being in an exam where it's just like you just have to have like that focus you just sit there and you have to do it in that time and you yeah. sort of lose lose track of everything else that's happening all around yeah most definitely most definitely yeah it's it, it you are very much in your own little world there and unless of course you you hear somebody having a little bit of a meltdown and then as is the case in the same room you don't tend to see it all on the edit but there's lots of times where we, we help each other out because yes it's yes it's a competition and you know there is a winner at the end but at the end of the day you are really competing with yourself because you're trying to do something against the clock um it's not as if it's the first one to finish so there's no speed aspect to it it's you have to finish to the to the best of your ability so you're, you're competing with yourself really and then it's just down to the judges as to whether they like your stuff or not yeah um, i think it's yeah. very awesome like environment like all the people like every sewing bee that i've spoken to is so lovely and i feel like they've got such a i don't know there's just such a strong connection even after the show between all the bees oh yeah most definitely most definitely uh at the weekend just gone we had the the stitch festival uh, up in London um, and yeah anybody else that came along to that show would see how close we all are we're, we're, I think there was quite a few of us there this year I spent quite a lot of time with um, Fove and Asma um, I saw you up there as well <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah there was we, we are we are very close when we get together I think well we've all, the, all got that shared 
that shared experience. Um, and it's quite a unique experience as well, isn't yeah, it? So it is, yeah. It's, I mean, uh, it, it's it's a game of two halves. Uh, really, there's there's what we went through in the filming, um, and the time that it took us to do all those things. You know, it's all done in real time. There's a five hour challenge. You do a five, but you know, it's we, we went through all that, um, and as a, a group of so as we we went through that and supported each other, and we saw each other cry, and we saw each other break down, but we saw each other related as well. And so we've we've seen all of that. And then there's the second half to it, which is the edit that goes on the TV, um, which everybody else gets to see. And we get to enjoy that with our nearest and dearest and our friends. And that's what people talk about because that, that's all they've seen. So there, there's there's two elements to it. And it's great to have the ability to have access to both of those bits. Yeah, but yeah it's it's the, the former bit which keeps that's made us all so close. Do you ever worry, like, you know, but between the filming and the, like, it coming out on TV, would we ever worried like, what if the edit does me dirty and they they <laughs> or they make someone look really bad in the edit? Yeah, I I don't think they've ever done that on the SMB, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's that kind of show. It's it's as wholesome to do as it is to watch. Um, That's really good to know. It is. It's fantastic. Um, but then again, when the edit comes out, you you still don't know what's gonna what what it's gonna look like. I mean, there were times that I was sat uh, on the sofa with Jane, my wife, and we were watching it. And I was convinced that I was going to go out <laughs> because, because, <laughs> because, of, because of the edit. Because, you know, then take, you know, a, a lot of what you see on the edit, we don't get to see, you know, what the judges talk about, what Sarah and the judges talk about, um, how the rankings are, all of that. We have no idea about that. We know on the day that we finish something in the time and that's it. Um, when you're when they're like, oh, yeah, Tony could be in trouble this week. And you're like, am I? Yeah. Oh, no. Literally, I thought I was going home. I was watching it. I'm watching the edit. Thing, that's it. Jane, I'm off this week. I didn't realise. <laughs> <laughs> must have been a dream those other weeks. <laughs> yes, must have been. Um, so Mel wants to know about the Tony shirt with your collaboration with Emporia. Yeah, that that's that's super exciting, that is. Um, and I, I didn't see that coming at all. Um, after being on the Sony, uh, I had so many people asking me about my shirts. I, I love a shirt. Uh, I love a, a big, a big print shirt, uh, and it. The, the, and it, I just thought it's just my pattern. It's the one that I've used forever. Um, it's just a very simple pattern. It's very simple blocks, Cuban collar, flat sleeves. That you sew in. Um, I can belt them out in about ninety minutes if I need to. Um, but when I say I need to, that was a rod I made for my own back on the sewing bee, actually, <laughs> because. I took two shirts, the, the, the filming's done in blocks of two episodes, and obviously you don't know when you're gonna go out and all that kind of stuff. So I took two shirts up with me, just in case I got through to the second one, and I did. And then, the, so the first thing I had to do when I come home was make another two shirts. And then I got through, and then I had to make another two shirts. But yeah, but yeah my, um, so I've made a rod from my own back. So, but the shirt pattern itself, yeah. Um, people just ask him, what, what pattern is it? What pattern is it? And I said, mine, I said, well, and I don't know anything about grading. You know, as I said, I very much make it up as I go along. Um, so I bumped into Charlotte and Claire at Ali Pali last year um, and asked them if they fancied doing a collaboration. Um, I like Emporia. I like Emporia patterns. I like their ethos. Um, I like the community that they've got built up around them. And uh, and yeah, I thought it was just just be a perfect fit, to be honest. Um, and yet they said they said yes, which was fantastic. Um, as I said, I'm a brother ambassador, so I then got in touch with brother and see if saw if they wanted to be involved with that as well. And yeah, it's kind of a tri party thing, and it's all come off. And yeah, we launched it at the Stitch Festival at the weekend, and yeah, it's gone down an absolute storm. Which I, you know, who'd have thought? You know, <laughs> kind of <laughs> um, unbelievable, but it's fantastic. Yeah, I feel like what I'm getting from this is that you need to like you need to believe in yourself more because everyone else is like, yes, Tony, I want your shirt. You're going to go on the sewing bee. And you're like, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank, thank you for that. I, I do back myself, but, uh, <laughs> but maybe, just may, humble. May, yeah, may, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I love to talk about myself. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, I, may, maybe I, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, it seems like the the Tony shirt went down amazingly at, at yeah. Emporia over the weekend. Um, yeah. And I think there's not that many like men's patterns, like especially indie patterns. Mm -hmm. There's not like that much choice. So I don't know. Do you do you feel like that? Yeah, I totally agree. The, the amount of men's patterns out there is is 
it's minimal really uh, but the, the the range of clothing for men is minimal really you know when you when i say men you know traditional men's clothes um let, let's call it um rather than get into the realms of fluidity and everything because I, I do tend to use quite a few ladies patterns and make them into men's patterns etc but yeah in regards to actual men's patterns there's very few out there uh particularly indie ones maybe more so uh maybe more, but more unisex rather than male um the big four patterns um for me personally aren't that inspiring because you know like almost when you go looking for a a book at an airport that you're, you're attracted first by the cover and you think oh, i like that when you look at the big four patterns for menswear the photos are so out of date or they're really badly cartoon drawn and you know or the colors are completely off and out of season because they don't refresh it enough i think there's a lot of work that can be done in, I mean, generally in patterns but in male patterns to give male sewers or even you know anybody looking for menswear more inspiration by better imagery to be honest because when i look at a, a, a pattern now you have to look past the image on the front <laughs> Just look at the basic, the, the actual basic silhouette and think, oh, that's the silhouette I'm after. Those colours are awful. I'm going to do it in this colour or this fabric and this and the other. So, so yeah, there aren't there aren't many out there. Um, and so, yeah, it was a good opportunity to uh, work with Emporia to, to give them an offering. Um, and, yeah, just just to knock up a – it means anybody can knock up a simple shirt now. I mean, they could have done before, but one hopes that mine looks more attractive. That, well, I think it does. It's got a picture of me on it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Yeah, we've got a really good question from Tamlin. She says, have you got any other patterns in mind that you'd like to have made? Or is this a one-off? That's a fantastic question because we, we, we didn't see the shirt pattern come in, really. Um, but we did. Uh, I love zero waste um, patterns. Um, I, I'm, most of the clothes that I make for myself other than my shirts are zero waste. Um, and i am experimenting a lot more with that at the moment uh, or, or sorry zero waste or minimal waste uh, minimal waste to me is where you have a little you end up with a few little triangles that you save for uh, mending and repairing at a later date rather than big sections that you're cutting out so possibly looking in, into that um into some zero waste stuff or maybe to if if i did look at patterns it would just be a a, a good simple trouser block I, I love making trousers for myself um being a man of a certain age, I love an elastic waist. Yeah, I think everyone <laughs> does. I mean, if anyone's come out of the pandemic and not thinking I'm elasticating all waists from now on, yeah, that's I mean, it. Props elastic to them. Waist, <laughs> elastic waist, faux fly, nice big side inseam pockets, and then maybe a patch pocket on the back for your phone. Um, but yeah, so maybe maybe some 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 good easy easy make trousers. So some people are a little bit. Uh, worried about making trousers particularly when you look at flies etc but a faux fly is really really simple to pop in there and you get the effect of having a fly so it doesn't look like you've just got a pair of fancy joggers on um, yeah, and it works yeah. like a beauty so yeah maybe i don't know maybe i'm breaking news here but i've just i'm just thinking on the spot yeah michelle says can you do a jeans pattern that would be great yeah it would wouldn't it uh, i have made jeans for myself uh using um a couple of books actually just just try and cobble together what a, what pattern should be um but it's just the top stitching isn't it you've just got to be so precise to, it's to, quite to get a it. time consuming project i think i think that's yeah, what yeah. means they're like i'll do it when i've got like you know a whole week of just doing this and no one's ever got that so they just, it just never yeah happens. no that's true i i like i said i've, I've done something myself but yeah it's just when the, the make's relatively easy isn't it but it, so sorry, sorry, when I say relatively easy, it's it's a it's a trouser build. It's just the top stitching, and if you're doing flat fouls and and, not, and all the like, so yeah. But yeah, that's another that's another great idea. Another great idea. But yeah, maybe that fits. Into, yeah. Maybe that fits into the trousers. I'm quite yeah. into big trousers at the minute. I'm quite into big, almost like balloon pants kind of thing. <laughs> I feel like that's quite on trend as well now. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it it seems to be. Yeah, things things catch up. Mainstream fashion catches up, doesn't it? So, it's uh. Yeah, I've been bouncing those out for a while now. I can't, the reason I'm looking over there because that's my wardrobe. <laughs> um, you must know what you've been making. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm I'm quite into those. Um, but yeah, zero waste, big utilitarian stuff. Who knows that, that there may be something there. But the the thing with that is that it's quite niche. Where right? well, as opposed mm -hmm. to my shirt, lots of people could like shirts, or they can make shirts for their partners um, or for themselves. Yeah. So. I don't want to get into like niche 
niche things. Yeah, I don't want to do something like too specific, but yeah. yeah. What have you made that's zero waste? Uh, I have uh, zero waste. I the the Jitta Helmerson. Um, I initially got a couple of her patterns, uh, and I, I've done her work jacket and her block pant. Uh, indigo Indigo do a great uh, balloon pant at the minute. Um, I've made a couple of pairs of those. Uh, what else have we got over there? I've done shirts, um, zero waste shirt. I love a zero waste shirt actually. You can get a, a shirt out of 140 by 75 uh, piece of fabric. You can get a nice shirt with an inverted box beat on the back. That's really um, cool. Yeah, those are good. In fact, yeah, I, was gonna, I actually made one of those for Esme. I shouldn't say that actually, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you got the surprise. So I know I don't know why I, I don't know why I told you that, but um, uh, no, I, I tell you why I told you that because um, whether you've seen, I've got a, a one of my shirts has got an Esme print on it. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I posted that on Insta, and she came back and she said, "Oh, you got to make me one." And I said, "Well, I'll only make you a shirt when it's got my face on it." Um, so I kind of I had this um, floral duvet that looked a little bit like a camo, um, and I screen printed my little face logo all over it in black um, in black ink and knocked up a zero waste shirt and sent it off to her. So yes, yeah, so a zero waste shirt to do. Um, I've done zero waste dungarees, uh, sun tops, tiered skirts. Um, yeah, I, I just like I just like the idea of zero waste. Essentially, it's just rectangles um, yeah. and just manipulate them in certain ways, whether you're gathering them or pleating them. Um, yeah, it, or, and, and anything that you cut out, you typically sew back in as a facing as well. So. Um, but like I said, sometimes I might do a zero waste, but end up being a minimal waste because I want to shape something slightly with a triangle. Yeah, it's really cool. I feel like that must really like be super satisfying for your like engineering brain as well to uh, like, you know, think about how all the pieces fit together yeah. and then there's like nothing left at the end. But yeah. like, it's so cool. Yeah, no, that you've, you've got it. It's hit the nail on the head there, Eva. It is exactly that. If you're doing something or if you're sizing it up, sizing it down, you've then got to think about what the layout is mm. with the fabric that you've got available to you. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, we've had some lovely comments from Sarah Jocker. Um, they said that you're such a lovely man in person. <laughs> so you're not just putting it on for the TV. Right. <laughs> you're, you're nice in the real world as well. And uh, they said they loved that shirt of Esme. What a great shirt. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you very much. And what did Michelle say? We had uh, Michelle says they've never used a big four pattern yet. Much prefer indie patterns, but do wish there were more men's patterns. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I, that, I, the big four ones, I mean, they're, they're there and they've been there forever. And, and, and when you look at the patterns, you can see they've been there forever from almost yeah. day dot. Um, it, it's, yeah, it just doesn't energise people. So I think, but indie patterns do because they get the they, they get the imagery right. They get they, they get their market better, don't they? And, and yeah. I totally agree. I, to, I totally agree. Um, there are lots of good indie patterns out there that do do some good unisex clothing, um, which are well worth hunting out. Yeah, I think there's some new men's patterns that's just come out from Friday Pattern Company. There are, yes, there are. I, I was I was on the pattern testing for oh, nice. those, um, and yeah, I made the Brambler pants, which are their trousers, and that's a really good trouser pattern. Really good. Um, it comes in at, it comes in uh, per the pattern as a tapered pant, so it's a Loose around the hips goes in quite narrow with a couple of folds at the bottom. Uh, I've since made a couple of pairs which are straight down um, and also balloon a bit. Um, but they've got a great pocket detail on that. And also a good, uh, it's an elastic waist, but it's got an integral webbing belt. But yeah, they are, they're great. It's, they're good as well. That's really cool. Yeah, I think with the indie patterns, the instructions are just so much better as well. Yeah. And like there's so alongs and also the community as well. You can see more versions like on Instagram Most and stuff like that. So it's really cool. Yeah. Most definitely, yeah. Most definitely. But Tamlin makes a good point that the the new Nomi range from McCall's looks quite cool. There's some men's patterns in that range. There are, yes, there are. They, they do look pretty good. Um, lots of tailored um, bits and pieces in the Nomi range. Um, they've got quite a good, uh, good few Instagram sewers uh, involved with those as well. They've got uh, Norris Stanford. Uh, obviously, Mimi G got her own there. I think Donny Q's got some with the Nomi as well. But yeah, they are good. They're very good. But yeah. they're, still, they're, still, they're still a little bit stale as well. They're, they're not. But, you know, the worry is that they'll stay the same and they won't evolve. The big mm. four won't evolve them, I don't think. 
yeah I think that with the Nomi stuff they're definitely like trying to you know ha you know have a bit more of a sort of funky approach with them aren't they and like they're getting different indie designers on board to, and stuff like that so that's really cool it's good um, it's good we need we need a few more male sewers to get involved as well I mean I at the, the Stitch Festival in the weekend just gone it was a I was lucky enough to be asked to be one of the judges for the dressmaking competition. Um, and I was doing menswear and children's wear. In the menswear category, there were only three items there, which I was really quite sad about, really. Um, and yeah, I, it's just a shame that we don't have more people wanting to, to show menswear uh, in dressmaking competitions as well, just to get involved with it. Because you can, you can mix it up. Um, it doesn't just have to be a suit. It doesn't have to be a t-shirt or a shirt. Or, you know, you can you can mix it up, do two pieces, cohorts, all the like. Um, but yeah, we we need to get a, a, a bit more inspiration out there, I think, for uh, male sewing. Yeah. Or sewing, or sewing um, typically male clothing. I think it can be a bit harder to get into um, sewing if you're starting with menswear because I think the first thing you think of is like, oh, I'll do a shirt, but then that's you Difficult. know a few more advanced <laughs> techniques like buttonholes yeah. and the collar yeah. and all that so yeah. i think it's um you know like just being able to do something quite simple but still a garment is like a good gateway so i don't know what you would suggest for like men getting yeah started you, you're spot on there actually I, I hadn't really thought of that um because yeah it, yes because even if you want to do a t-shirt you then start got to mess about with with jersey and doing ribbon necks and cuffs so, and they're not the easiest things in the world um, so yeah, I, it's a tricky old thing. I, I'm trying to think what the first things. Are. No, I think I just jumped both feet into to mail stowing. Really, I just looked at how clothes were made and, and tried to figure it out myself. Um, I, I should have used patterns, to be honest. It would have been a lot easier, but <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't learn. I wouldn't have learned as quick. But yeah, you're right. I, I hadn't thought of that actually from a mail stowing perspective or, or menswear perspective. That there isn't an easy make to start with. If anybody out there can think of one, then let us know um maybe, maybe that's the direction i mean also with male sewing the whole i've had since since leaving the bee and, and being more involved in the sewing community um i've had uh men come up to me saying that they want they want to learn um will will we do some male sewing classes and things like that because they they, they don't want to go along to a mixed group because they feel that you know for whatever reason be it bravado be it testosterone, I don't know what it is, but they, they feel a little bit intimidated going into the, the, the typical sewing environment for classes. Um, so maybe that's that's a thing. I mean, who'd have thought that? But yeah, so so maybe yeah, that's yeah. something I might look into as well. I'm, I'm starting to get involved with a local group uh, not too far from us who are social prescribers. So they're, they're doing sewing classes for men, uh, for mental health uh, therapy, basically. So we're going to get involved with that and do a bit, a few bits and pieces there. And I'm hoping off the back of that, that'll give me the experience of, of teaching. So maybe we can try and get a few more people involved as well, be it in face to face or online. That sounds excellent. Because I think as well, like a lot of these things, they are sort of aimed more at women or they're geared up for women. So then you wouldn't really want to be like the only bloke in the class and just feel a bit awkward. And yeah, I mean, having I a space for men in the community is really important. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the, the the group that I'm involved, that I'm going to be involved with, they, they have uh, gents there that, that can't, not that can't, but don't want to be in the, involved in a, a, a female environment because of whatever their history is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, it, it's just a case of, of seeing how we can get more people involved, really. Yeah, that's really cool. Am I the only man that's been on the stash up so far? We've had Adam from oh, of course Adam. Good. That's all right. I didn't yeah, want to be the only one. I spoke to Matthew as well. So oh, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. That's all right. Good. I didn't want to be the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not not the uh, not the only one, but yeah, definitely uh yeah. definitely <laughs> overwhelmingly women in the in the sewing community. But yeah, who else who else shall I get on? Who who are other blokes that I can talk to? Oh, I, don't know. I, I, I think there's there's lots of loud voices out there that, that would gladly jump on, rather than me name and shame them. I'm sure. Yeah, that that's when always awkward as well, isn't it? If you don't say someone and you're like, oh, I should have said them, and now they're going to think I don't like them. <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was the democratic answer for me. Yeah. <laughs> democratic political answer, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's Mel say? 
Yeah, so Mel says on Studio 77, which they, they've got like a bag making club and community, we have a few men um, that sound interested in bags. So maybe men feel more at ease with unisex things. And Mel yeah. says I should speak to Patrick on the show. That would be nice if I can get convinced Patrick to come on. That would be lovely, yeah. He <laughs> seems to be on everything at the minute, so might as well give, give it a go. <laughs> I'm not sure how much of, uh, of his own sewing Patrick does. I feel like it's more sort of, I don't know, running the industry. I don't know if he does a lot of sewing at home. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the answer to that either. You're right. He is very, he is very, very involved um, in circularity and sustainability um, with his companies that he has up north, as well as what he's got going on several row. I think he's got a couple of books out at the moment as well. So yeah, he's a very busy fella. Busy, busy man. <laughs> Be like, do you want to come on Stash Chats as part of your book tour, Patrick? <laughs> I'll send him an email pretending to be his agent and then he'll be like, oh, yeah, OK, put that in the calendar. <laughs> oh, that'll be funny. Oh, well, Pat Tamlin's done a vote for Patrick as well. <laughs> I'll do my best, guys. I think, I think lots of people would. <laughs> <laughs> He's very popular, is Patrick. When you're on the B, did you get much chance to like interact with Patrick and Esme, or is it mostly just like what's in the show? Uh, not really, no. Um, they they play the role of judges very, very well, and, and that that's their job while they're there. Um, and obviously, as so as you treat them with a, an element of reverence, because they, at the end of the day, can say whether you're going home or not. Um, yeah. So, yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, no, there, there, there isn't much. Um, I mean, there's the, obviously there's conversations, etc., but there, there isn't that much uh, banter, let's call it, um, and that's that's good really because you kind of need that. Obviously, the rap party at the end of filming that was different, but we we're not allowed to talk about that. All right, okay, <laughs> <That's> excellent. <laughs> the ready, steady sitch has just joined. Welcome to the chat. Should we give a quick roundup of what we've been chatting about? Um, so, minimal stash. Very good at buying per project. Yes. Good at upcycling uh, vintage clothes. Good at scrap busting for linings, facings and the like. We've talked a little bit about the sewing bee and how Tony applied for the sewing bee to prove everyone wrong because <laughs> everyone said, you can go on sewing bee and you'll do really well. And he was like, mm, no, not sure about that idea. <laughs> but then he applied to prove to everyone that he wouldn't get on the sewing bee did get on the sewing bee to the final <laughs> <laughs> so annoyingly you've proved everyone right tony <laughs> Sorry about that. and uh then we've just been chatting a bit about the new tony shirt pattern that's um, a collab with emporia patterns um because everyone loves tony shirts and they were like need to have it so finally finally brought that to everyone so you can get that from emporia and then we've just been chatting a bit about bringing men into the sewing community and yeah what sort of projects can get men inspired so yeah let us know in the chat if you've got any more uh, comments or questions for tony so I'm having a having a really good chat here you got anything well, about, about the unisex element I, I i started sewing with bags didn't i so i i, I did that same thing myself i you know i made the the, the bag from a from a yarn work and it my, the next build after that was were bags for my bikes uh, like handlebar bags and, and frame bags and the like and i did that before i then went on to to clothing in fact well the jump then was from cycle bags and i made a cycle cap um that was my first kind of garment i suppose uh, because I, as, as a very keen cyclist i was buying lots of little cycling caps and i thought well i wonder if i can make one that's that's kind of the way that I, I wonder if i can make it i wonder if i can make it so i made a cycling cap and then yeah i made loads of those then um and then then just went on to more different sorts of clothing so yeah so maybe that unisex element of bags is is the way forward to get people get more men sewing maybe and i feel like with bags as well you don't have to worry about fitting yeah there's no fitting there's no yeah and they're, they're scrap busted as well you can use anything about can't you be brilliant yeah i've just written that down <laughs> so i don't forget <laughs> yeah so do men's bag making workshop or something yeah. Could be really yeah. cool. i made a bag today actually somewhere i have to know where that is uh, so we've got Tony. What is your favourite print on a fabric? Oh, yeah, I, I love a skull. 
<laughs> I love a skull print, uh, but I, I'm just open to anything really. I, I, I've got quite, I've got too many shirts. I won't lie. Um, I tend to, I, I, just thinking about this event, I think probably one of the main reasons that I don't have a big stash is that I do have a fantastic little fabric shop in the town where I work and live. Um, so if I have a project and I think about it, it's literally a five minute bike ride to the to the fabric shop um and in there they do have loads and loads of different printed cottons and poly cottons um for shirts um i ryan the guy's name is i call him my fabric pusher because i walk in there and he knows exactly what i want he's a, he'll say tone come here i've got some new things for you and now <laughs> it's, it's, that's, <laughs> he's it in his coat. <laughs> that's it pretty much yeah so um so yeah, I'm I'm open to to all sorts and any prints really. Um, I experiment with as much as I possibly can. I've got a, a great one that I I've got from the show actually. It's got beetles on it, a big sort of beetles, dung beetles, and some flowers. Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to making that. That's cool. So you find like with having a really good shop locally, you don't get like the FOMO as much from the online fabrics. No, I don't. No, I don't. To be honest, and I don't buy. I, I don't buy online. I don't buy fabric online or any notions online. Um, I'm too touchy feely with my fabric. Um, I like to see it. I like to touch it um, before I buy it, basically. Um, so that's kind of where having, a, luckily, having a, a little fabric shop. It is just a little fabric shop. A little family runs been going forever in a day. Um, it's called. Well, yeah, they just sell remnants. That's that's almost what they're called. Um, they just sell remnants or, or roll ends or dead stock and the like. Um, so sometimes then more often than not they, they can't get the same stuff again um so i like that um again that fits in with me really quite nicely um but yeah i get to go and touch and feel it and the same with the using up uh, old clothing and scrap clothing again it's a case of going in having a feel is that good is that not so good so yeah i i typically don't buy fabric online yeah yeah that's good good to know like it's a different approach isn't it because i think a lot of people can get really into buying stuff online and then you get it it's not quite what you wanted and then yeah. it just sits in your stash yeah. um so michelle says do you do you make any of your beanies no i don't i've i've found i found this i found um this one type of beanie and i'm kind of stuck with it i love it it's uh it's merino um, and so it's 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 cold in the summer, warm in the winter, um, hyperallergenic, all that lovely stuff that Merino is. And they're actually, uh, I actually get them from uh, another little company uh, that's in Bude, uh, Rooted Ocean, the name that their name is. And yeah, they're great guys. They've got the same ethos as me in regards to fixing things and making things. Um, so yeah, it works really well. I, I have knitted my own. I do have lots of, I, I, I love hats, to be honest. I've got lots and lots of different hats. Um, uh, but yeah, I have knitted them own, but the ones that I wear most of the time are uh, the one particular brand. Got your favourite. Got my favourite, and that's it. You know, when you get to a certain age, you know what you like. <laughs> no messing about. And Michelle says, where did you get your face stamp from? Oh, the face stamp. Um, I, I did that. I just came up. I, yeah, I... I was I was online actually because I, I used to get I used to have like little labels that I used to sew in the back of my shirts um, just to just say Tony on them um, and I there's a, a famous printed label company um, in the Netherlands that um, that did probably most people's labels and I was just thought well I wonder I wonder if I could wonder what a, 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 a color printed label looked like and I just got a photo of my face and traced around it on a vector program. I thought, oh, that'll do. I'll just get a sample of that. And then that, that was it. There, there isn't anything other than that. And I haven't changed it since. Um, so I've been using that just little ident thing. And it's not a brand. I don't consider that. It's just the way I'd use for marking stuff that I've made. Because um, I don't sell my stuff, um, my, my clothing and that. But then again, I suppose it almost is a brand now because it's just appeared on the Emporio pattern. Yeah. <laughs> so so maybe, okay. maybe I've inadvertently come up with a brand. I don't know. <laughs> Do people ask you a lot if you sell stuff? Yeah, yeah, lot, lots and lots. Um, but uh, as as all the service know, if you were to sell your items, people wouldn't be able to afford them. Yeah. Yeah. I I. I 
I think about, you know, if you get a tradesman into your house, uh, an electrician or a plumber or something like that, he's going to charge you at least 30 pounds an hour labour. If you put that alongside what we do, uh, you know, take a couple of days, well, take five hours to, to, to do something, there's 150 pounds just labour before you've got materials and then, yeah. No, I think sometimes as well people ask, because they assume it's going to be cheaper. Yeah, and that's, that's, like, that's, that's what I mean. So that's what I that's what I tell people. Well, the labour content is this, and at thirty pound an hour, like you pay your Sparky or your Chippy, it's going to be this. And and also, I I don't really like to monetize my, my hobby really because it is a hobby. Um, I it enjoy takes it. fun out of it, doesn't it? Yeah, I I used to like I said, I'm a keen cyclist. When I was a lot younger, in my very early twenties, I had a bike shop. So I was into cycling. So I got a bike shop. Um, and it absolutely killed my love of bikes <laughs> until I got rid of the shop and then I got back into my bikes again. So I, I don't want to recreate that with, you know, I don't, I don't want to spoil the, the fun that I have. So, so into me and making to me, it's a time when I get to switch off. I just sit at my machine, might put the radio on, might not, but it's when you get into that flow state. It's when time just disappears. We, this is why we do it, isn't it, a lot of the time. I, I, in regards to, you know, it, it's a good it's a good thing for my mental health personally so that's the, one of the primary reasons that i do it it's a way of switching off the world getting on with what you want to do and you get something tangible at the end which is fantastic something you can keep as well yeah, yeah that's it that's it i because i feel that like as well with your process it's quite like experimental so then if you're making it to sell it you can't really do that because you need to make something that you know is going to work yeah so if you do something that's not quite right then you're like oh, okay <laughs> that was a yeah, waste no, of time that's then. exactly that's exactly right like i said recently i was given a load of denim to 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 do some reworking on um and i did it um to for myself um to to, to give me the challenge of doing it but i then gave the, the garments back to the company that, that gave me the the denim to work um to hang up in their store to say look you can this is an example of how you can rework the denim that they've got for here there and everywhere um and they just said well why don't you sell them for that same reason you know if you're going to sell it you've got to do them in sizes you've got to have an element of re repeatability around it and then it's no longer creative because you're just belting them out my my previous life my previous work life was high volume manufacturing so i know how all that works <laughs> and i yeah. don't want to do that i don't want to do that again <laughs> yeah you're not gonna make yourself a machine no nope. <laughs> uh, thready stitch so says can you show some fabrics but i don't know if you've got any to hand because of the aforementioned very small stash um I, to be honest i haven't no <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> i've got a little tub underneath my bed but it hasn't really got anything uh, in there at the moment other than a couple of bits of anchor we'll have to um yeah, you'll have to show us some pictures of what you've got. Have you got? I, I, can, I, can, I can show you that I made a. I, like I said, I made a skirt. Hang on, hang on a second. Oh, like I said, with um the whole reworking thing. This this week I was given a some trend, a trench coat. I think I mentioned this earlier on, um, and um, it had lots of oil stains on there so i had to cut out i'm gonna see if i can work this out i'm gonna put you in solo layouts i'm still here just so right. you don't have to figure out which so, side you're on so i made a skirt as you can see there just a bit of an a-liney kind of skirt it's got the pockets of oh, no. the front of the were, that, were those already in the jacket like yeah, that so, so all i've done there is i've cut that out and you've got the trench coat pockets there because there was a big oil stain on the back i've manufactured a a pocket there to cover up the oil stain and i've sewn back on the label for the brand that it was but what i like is that's the back of the trench coat yeah that's really cool so what you've got there is this real big box pleat with this detail but yeah so a lot of what i'm trying to do is try and look at what the original features are um, i've got another one here as well i'm trying to look at what the original features are um, and then trying to incorporate those in other one i've got there i mean th these are everybody does these but i fancy doing one this is a, was a pair of um, this brand workwear, um, so it's a, but it's a, a skirt, and I know everybody does these now, but you can knock one of those up in next to no time at all. So that was a cake. There was a big. There was about a bit of size forty pair of trousers um, that I just completely unpicked the waistband, took a few inches in, I put a couple of darts on the back, and still got all the original features.
Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. I love the um the big patch pockets on the side for like yeah, the well, utilitarian look. Yeah, that, that's it. Those are just I mean, you just use what's there. Um, and that's that's what I'm really quite into at the minute. Um I can sew those pockets if I want to, and I can, <laughs> but if they're there already, it's just a case of re, you know, just putting it in a different orientation. And it's kind of a more creative way to think about the process as well, I, I think, to, to try and rework something. Because yeah, yeah. if you start from scratch, you can basically just like do whatever you want. Whereas if yeah. you've got something, you're like, okay, well, this is here and, and that stains there. So I'm going to have to figure out a plan around it. Yeah, that's it. So the, 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 the light coloured skirt there, the waistband was actually the, uh, the front placket that I had to use because that was the longest part that didn't have any marks mm -hmm. on it that I could cut out that had interfacing behind it already that was going to be stable enough to use as a waistband. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, there, there are constraints that, that you have to work around, and I like that. Do you find that sometimes, like, the project sort of plans itself in a way? Because if there's, like, oh, well, that's the only bit that's long enough, so now I have to use this bit, and yeah. it kind of yeah. goes it, you know, goes in that way. Um, yeah, that's exactly you, it. You, you just, in the same way as doing zero waste, you have to try and just figure out where all those bits and pieces go when you're using pre-existing garments like for the trench mat for example I, I unpicked everything so that all the arms everything came off and then was laid out all over the floor I then chalked up the bits that I couldn't use so that, that showed me which bits of fabric I could use and then yeah that's what then grows out of that it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle but you don't have to smash it up at the end <laughs> that's it yeah 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 Right, we've got four minutes left. So if anyone's got a, a quick question, they can sneak it in the chat now. Um, have you got anything else that you want to talk to us about, Tony? Uh, no, I don't think I do. I, I had a great chat. It, it's love, I, I mean, I love talking about making stuff. I mean, that's that's the thing that I've I've got from my experience on the sewing bee. I mean, being out that, that as a maker, as a male maker, I typically I'm sat in the corner of my bedroom making things on my own and not getting to nerd out at all. I've now got, <laughs> after going on the sewing beat, I've had 11 other people that I could nerd out to and just talk so. And I, that was just incredible to me now. And now I've got that ability to do it to lots more people. I do lots of talks down here in the Southwest, um, which is great. I get to get to talk so and, and, and get to do things like this. So, yeah, no, it, it just a, it's just great talking so, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And definitely, I think it can be quite a lonely hobby because it is sort of based at home and then you just sort of do it. And sometimes, you know, if your head's in a project that's just not going well, you're like, oh, my gosh. But I think yeah. having that community as well is really important. Yeah. Um, oh, Thready, Steady, so, uh, Thready Stitch So said they really enjoyed the skirt. They said, that's so cool. I wish I could do sewing like that. Well, if I'd have shown you the sewing, you wouldn't have been too impressed, but maybe <laughs> the, <laughs> maybe the, the concept's better than the sewing. Because sometimes it's a little bit knife and fork because, you know, you, you've only got the overall finish looks great. But if you go look into the detail, maybe it's not so good. But, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think this is you being humble again, Tony. All right, okay. <laughs> Sorry. But, yeah, I think it's the... The sort of imagination, I guess, that's the most impressive yeah. part with the skirt, cool. like using those original features yeah, cool. um, and making it, because it, it really does come together as a skirt. You don't look at it and think, yeah. oh, that used to be a trench coat. Yeah. There's no way that was a trench coat ever. <laughs> you see the, um, the details. Oh, Sarah says, Tony, you're amazing. You'd be great at my community hall. Great work. Oh, thank you very much. Very kind. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, you've clearly got a lot of fans, Tony. Does it is it quite surreal for you to think that there are people that you potentially never met who are like big fans of yours? Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is a bit weird. Um, it's but it's it's lovely going to the shows and meeting as many people as possible. Um, but for that reason, just being able to talk about sewing and talking to other people about their making and how they enjoy it, um, and maybe that they've tried something that I've tried before, and maybe there's been a photo that I popped on Insta and to bang into it or yeah it's it is it's great it's weird still but i you know since being on the beat not many things are that weird to me now as long as it's not dangerous or illegal i tend to do it so <laughs> amazing you're like i survived <laughs> being on national television i can do this yeah i mean since that I've, the, the weird things that have popped up we ended up going to the national television awards me asthma and mia that was you know how ridiculous is that you know <laughs> We did the whole red carpet thing, sat with all everybody off TV. We were there. Um, I was on, I've done, I did an interview with Craig Charles on uh, Radio 6 Music. 
and there's lots of other bits and pieces that just popped up and it's bizarre but i'm still a postman that just likes to make some stuff to be honest yeah, that's you know? amazing. and if i take my hat off no it's like superman i completely disappear <laughs> You don't look like your logo anymore. No, that's it. I completely off. Completely. Off. completely. Yeah. You could be anyone. <laughs> oh, I always wear a hat, so I can't really get I can't really <laughs> different cat, different hat. Go baseball yeah. cap for the uh, the classic Hollywood disguise. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Tony. It's You're been an amazing chat. Um, really good to hear about everything that you've been working on and see your skirts as well. They were really impressive. Cool, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll be back the same time next week, 8 p.m. next Wednesday, and I'm going to talk to Asma next week. So mm -hmm. we should see if she's got any gossip on you that you didn't um, that you didn't tell us this week. <laughs> she'll, she'll she'll just tell you all I did was cry for ten weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's like Tony. Yeah, he seems too cheerful. He was crying. He was crying all all so and beat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She'll, that's exactly what she'll say. <laughs> oh, we'll see we'll see next week um well thank you everyone who watched as well for joining live and for your comments and yeah if you're watching on catch up still drop us a comment uh below so that we know you enjoyed this lovely chat with T tony bye yes thank you <laughs>